Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite CSS nerd, Gardner. Uh, okay, so we've talked about combinators, we've talked about selectors, we've talked about pseudo classes, pseudo elements, and now I want to talk about one of the more interesting and nuanced ways to select items, the attribute selector. Now for this, actually we're going to do uh, something a little bit different than what we've already done. We're actually gonna remove uh, much of this here and we're gonna add a form. And let's say it's a uh, method of get with an action of API something. <laughs> I don't know. And let's also have a form method of post action API something else. And inside the form, we're just going to add a couple of elements. Let's do an input of type checkbox and an input of type text. Let's say placeholder equals your name. And then let's have a button. And the button is going to just say submit. Uh, let's add a label around this. And um, let's just say that uh, this is going to be for yes or no. <laughs> and down here, let's add a ray uh, type. Um, an input named radio. Oh, and we want a type radio. And we'll say value is yes. And then no. And again, we're going to surround these with labels. Input. Um, okay. So now we have a form, uh, like two basic forms, and let's refresh the page. Now, why would you do two basic forms like this? I don't know. This is just for demonstration purposes for CSS. But we have two different forms here. And um, I'm gonna keep the nav stuff. Get rid of that, just so that you can see things a little more clearly. So what am I going to do here? Well, I feel like it might be important to differentiate the, the get form from the post form. So how do we do that? That is where attribute selectors come in. Let's do form, and then let's say um, method equals get. And now let's say padding equals uh, 10px and background is light green. <laughs> We're not trying to make it pretty. We're just trying to show how this works. So you can see now we have our get form has a light green and we can say form, uh, we can, we don't even have to say form. We can just say method equals post um, margin top 10 px padding uh, 20 px because we want it to be different background light pink and look at that now we have our posts and our get requests or our get forms are, are separated here that's pretty cool but let's let's make sure that we have uh, a a span here and we're going to do the same thing here let's do span and we will refresh the page here and now let's go over here and do uh, input type radio and it doesn't matter what type of um, if you use single or double quotes you can as long as you're consistent with it that's what matters uh, and then you can do um, display none, okay? So we're going to hide the radio buttons, um, but what we're going to do is um, input type radio, and then we're going to use a pseudo class of checked 
plus span. And let's say background white, or no, let's say background black and color white. Now if we refresh, boom, you can see we have our radio buttons, yes or no. We use that kind of uh, combinator selector in our um, web form or our input switch video a uh, couple of videos ago. Um, but these, basically, what, what I'm trying to say here is that these um, attribute selectors are really, really useful. However, we can go one step further. <laughs> let's, let's change these here. Let's say um, API something else. So let's say that we want to select anything that starts with uh, API. So let's go with form and then let's do action uh, and then we want to do uh, an up uh, uh, caret with an equal sign and then let's say slash API and we'll just give it a border of one pixel wide. And now you can see both of those have received a one pixel wide um, border. Let's do uh, dots, dotted. And there's your dots. So this this caret will will s search for anything that starts with the following um, text. So let's say we have we want to look for a form. And we want to find uh, anything ending with an action of something. So we could say action. Wow, action. And then we could do dollar sign equals something. And we'll just give it a two pixel wide solid black border. And there you go, you can see something and uh, this one ends with something. So it gets the solid black border and this one ends or begins with API and it gets dotted dash uh, things. And you don't have to do, do this, you could do um, text transform uh, uppercase. And if we refresh, there you go. And you can see it also has the dotted and dashed um, borders. Let's say we want to target any input uh, that has a placeholder that contains um, name. Let's make that have a background of transparent. There you go. Because that has name in the placeholder, uh, which is right here, it has a background of transparent. And the, this this tilde will select a, a specific word, whereas if you do an asterisk, uh, it would, like if we did uh, AM, it would also apply. But if we did a tilde, uh, then it would not apply. Uh, so this is a specific word, whereas this is a wild card with anything inside the attribute. Pretty cool. CSS selectors are awesome. Attribute selectors are super powerful. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that I love the web because you can query for elements in your document, uh, in your markup that, you know, in a very powerful, very expressive and very clear syntax. Um, and I just love it. I think it's great. If you enjoy these videos, if you're getting something out of it, if you're learning from, you know, the stuff I'm putting down here, you might consider hitting that subscribe button and maybe sharing this video with other people who might be interested in learning about the web and how the web works. But I think that's going to do it for now. I, I thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate you being here and spending time with me and learning something new together. I want to say thank you to uh, Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon who makes this show possible. If it wasn't for people like Glenn, people donating to this channel through Patreon or through YouTube membership, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thanks, man. I really appreciate it. If you believe in the work that I do, you can help support the show over on Patreon, just like these fine folks have. Uh, but uh, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.